Good morning, this is Jason Johnson with ABS Supply. I'm here today to help you set up a blast system properly. Let's say you're new to the job. The foreman says, here's the blast trailer. Set this thing up. Go get to work. You're like, what do I do? Well, have no fear. You got a phone, you got YouTube, I'm here to help. So let's talk about the components and what we've got. So we've got a 210 compressor, we've got an after cooler, we've got a blast pot, we have blast hose, helmet, safety gear, all the pieces here. Some of mine are going to be pre-set up because they're on a trailer. Some of yours may be in a pile. But once you see where all the pieces go, you should be able to figure this out. So let's start here. I like to start at the compressor and just work my way all the way out to the nozzle. Then I don't forget anything if I just follow the air and flow from the start of the air out to the finish point, which is the nozzle. I make sure I get everything set up properly. So you'll notice on our fitting right here that uh, that's been bushed up. These compressors come standard with two claw fittings, like you'll see up top there. No bueno for blasting. These are not acceptable. They do not flow enough air. And in fact, if we ran this air compressor on a standard two-claw jackhammer hose, we would lose 10 PSI with our number five nozzle. 10 PSI equates 15% production. The production loss is 1.5% for every one PSI. So if you want to go 15% slower and spend 15% more of your time blasting, use a two-claw jackhammer hose like this. These should not be used for your pot. They should be used only for the, your air supply system. They are perfect for that. They are not acceptable for running a blast pot. So now that we've got our inch and a half air hose hooked up to the compressor, and we hook it up then to our after cooler. After coolers, not mandatory, but holy cow, they almost should be. They're almost as important as the blast pot. A lot of people think that the sand is shot out of a blast pot like a cannon. It is not it falls by gravity, like sand through an hourglass. So, if I have water in my pot, what do you think that sand's gonna flow like? Not well, it's a nightmare. You've got someone standing there choking it, shaking it, doing everything they can to get that stuff flowing. These things turn your blasting into a one-man operation and you use less media because now you can run it lean and mean like you should be. You'll notice these whip set checks. This is a 27WC15. This is a medium size. There's small, medium, and large size whip checks. These are super important for every connection. So not only is it for your safety, but it's the law. I almost lost an eye one time. I'm not kidding. I took a hose off that had pressure under it with no whip check. It came up live, smacked my hat right off my head, shot oil in my eye. I couldn't see for an hour. I thought I was going to lose my eye incredibly scary. I'd never want to duplicate it. I do not run a, or recommend running a system without whip checks. Super cheap. They last forever. Please use them. So now that we've got the after cooler, I'm not going to plug this in right now because the fan makes it a lot of noise. This way you can hear me talk better. But at the end, before we start blasting, we will hook this up and show you how it's stripping moisture out of the air. These air compressors are literally water pumps. What they do at our elevation here in Minnesota is they compress the air eight to one. So you take a humid day, muggy day. Actually, mornings are the worst. Like right now, when you walk through the grass and your shoes get wet, there is water everywhere. So when we condense that eight to one, we are actually pumping water into the pot if we do not have something to remove it. That much more important. So let's talk downstream of the after cooler now. We've got, this is our moisture separator. We've got a drop here for our breathing line, not for the blast hose, for this small one is breathing line, not blast. And a larger inch and a half, which is going to our blast pot. So notice, whip checks, safety clips, all hooked up properly. We've got that done. We're gonna come over to the pot. Now we are gonna hook up our system here to our breathing can. Our air system, I'll just go over briefly. This is a topic for a whole nother conversation. We have uh, a breathing canister here with the charcoal filter. It's actually a nine stage filter in there. Takes out oil, water, and odor. What it does not do is monitor for carbon monoxide, the fourth point to get grade D breathable air. That's what this yellow box over here is, the COHP from Bullard. That is carbon monoxide high pressure, COHP. That is a monitor. It will scream at 110 decibels and put out a light on a remote alarm hooked to the compressor should we exceed our 10 parts per million allowable CO levels in our breathing air. So very important for safety. We're big on safety first here. 
But now that we've got this hooked up, our pressure set to a minimum of 55 PSI. I like it about 85 or 90 on the breathing can because that's where I start to get the max air conditioning or heating out of my climate control tube on my belt. But the legal limit for 50 feet of airline is a minimum of 55 PSI. So you want to just be over that to supply enough breathable air. Now we've got this hooked up. This may look different than what you've got. We run electric controls here in Minnesota. Uh, on these cool days, it was down to 40 degrees this morning. Before long, it's going to be 20, 10, 15 at night um, when we start the day. So the, the 50 foot air lines, the 100 foot of your twin line with your dead man running all that cool compressed air with or without an after cooler, um, there's too much opportunity for freeze up. And on these cold mornings, you're going to be stuck with a pot that's froze up, not working, nothing more frustrating than getting 10 minutes into a job and your system fails because you got a little bit of ice in your dead man. So we run electric power lines. They are faster, more reliable, and you can also go over 100 feet of blast hose. So I don't have to move this pot around the job site. I can leave it here and just run two, three, 400 feet of blast hose to what I'm blasting. So we'll talk about that more later. Pressure regulator, we have this so that we can blast at low pressure. Should we, today we're blasting big iron steel. We wanna let it rip. 100 PSI plus as much as we can get. So we've got this set and our grit valve is preset as far as we know. We'll get to that once we start blasting, we can adjust the knob to fine tune. We wanna listen for that whistle, I'll go through that. But if you would take a break, let's walk around to the other side. I think we're ready to hook up our blast hose and our helmet safety gear and we're close to blasting this morning. Okay, so now we're ready to hook up our blast hose and get ready to get, get to work. So we've got our two clock cupping. Notice I've got whip checks on here. That snaps into place. I've got this clip and I'm gonna make sure, of course, my safety whip check. I've got my power cord. You may have a pneumatic, but it's the same, the same thing. Okay, all right, I got my power cord. This is just happens to be teed into our battery on the compressor for convenience, but otherwise I would have alligator clips. So I'm gonna hook up power to my pot. So I am now have juice. All right, I have my safety gear here. It's important. I don't wanna be spitting rocks, chiclets, and anything else later on in the day, coughing up. One important thing to remember, one good rule, it's easy, hose to nose. From the hose that you hook up to your breathing system, that can be any brand. I like Bullard. They're very easy to fix and work on in the field. You may have something else, that's fine. But from the hose you hook up to air to your nose should be all one brand. So we have Bullard breathing hose, we have a Bullard air conditioner, we have a Bullard breathing tube. It all needs to be the same brand to be compliant. So despite the fact that you're mixing and matching Nova, Bullard, Clemco, which are all certified, technically when you put them together, it is not a certified assembly. So you need to pick a brand and stick with it hose to nose. So we're gonna hook this up. Okay, we've got our helmet, our blast hose, everything is good. Now we're ready to go try and start the compressor and let's see how cold this thing is. I'm going to make sure that my, my line is shut off so I don't get surprised by air coming out of here when this thing loads. And a green button. We got the compressor started, had a couple minutes to warm up. We just loaded it or energized the air end. So now before I go live with any air, I want to double check all my components and make sure my ball valves are closed so I don't get surprised by something turning on automatically. So I'm going to go here to my pot. Yes, my ball valve is off. My air cannot go by here. If we come back upstream, make sure everything is connected. Looks good. It's all safety clip. I'm following the air. I'm going to here. Now I'm ready at this point to go live and hook up my uh, after cooler. You'll notice air is leaking out of there. That is good. 
I don't need it wide open, but I do need it enough to drain because we're going to generate some moisture this morning. After cooler is hooked up, running, air is leaking out, but that is not wide open. Wide open draws too much air. We just don't have enough to spare. Now you can feel your hoses. We're energized and live up to the pot. I want to make sure this is a pressure hole pot. This is my exhaust. That was open. So I need to close this before I put air in or it's all going to come screaming out there. So that is closed. Now we're ready to open and it will automatically pressurize the pot. Got no leaks. Everything seems to be good. Sealed properly without leaks up here. Good. Our choke valve. This I want to have wide open. I only want to use this should I get a clog, a plug, a chunk of wet sand, something like that that happens to get by all my attempts to keep everything dry. This should be wide open under normal operating conditions. If it's extreme humidity, bad wet sand, something like that, you may have to choke it to try and push some of the pot through the grit through the pot. But be warned if you do that. You are going to wear out that grit valve, you are going to sandblast it, and you are going to buy more parts from me. So, whenever possible, run this wide open like that. I'm going to open up our CO monitor, make sure this is turned on, calibrated, running correctly, because unless you do so, you would never know. And you'll notice, it is not plugged in right now. So, air is going through it, but it is not doing anything. So, let's put our battery in. There we go. And now we can turn it on. You'll notice push this right here it's kind of a button and then it's going to give us a 60 second countdown so that it can calibrate and check its systems out if everything's good it'll give us a co reading if not it'll give us some sort of a code that's where you look it up on your phone or give us at abs supply a call and we'll go through it with you all right we had our 60 second warm-up rundown you'll notice my digital gauge zero parts per million that is perfect we have zero carbon monoxide in our breathing air. That's what we want to see. I'm going to close this just so I don't get a full of dirt and dust, but um, it is on and running. We're going to look at the canister. Everyone has their personal preference. I like it about 80, 85 PSI. I see the last person running it had it at about 65, 70. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this up a little bit more just for my personal preference. So we pull the locking knob out. And then we're going to turn it. All right, I just uncoiled my hose. I'm ready to blast. We're not going to do the actual blast work today on video. That's another day, another video. We'll show you some different medias and options. But I just uncoiled this hose. Important to note, if you leave it all wrapped up, you're going to wear your hose out much faster. So it's nice to drag it out, get the coils out, and then you're not tripping over it anyway. OK, so we were blasting parts. We just ran out of media. What do I do? How do I refill my pot? This is a pressure hole pot. It stays pressurized. What are the steps? Very simple. Take the lid off. We are going to make sure that our air inlet, come over here. We're going to shut off the air inlet coming to the pot from the compressor. Shut that off. And now we are going to slowly, so I don't blow out my eardrums or the cameraman's, we are going to let the air out of the pot. Bingo. You saw the pop-up drop. The pot is now depressurized, ready to refill. Once we've got it full, oh, common question. Can I overfill the pot? No, you can't. It's designed so that if media were up to here, it's just fine. So fill her up. Go for it. Put as many bags in as you can. Now that we've got it full, we are going to make sure that we first shut off the exhaust valve. Otherwise, air just goes right through the pot and out the exhaust. And now we're going to keep our fingers free of that so we don't lose them and we're going to turn on the air from the compressor there you go we just lost our lid but we're ready to blast this is Jason Johnson with ABS supply now it's your turn to go have a blast hopefully this is helpful if you had any questions on our setting up our rental trailer 
or your own, give us a call at ABS Supply. Don't worry about blowing things up. It's not that big a deal. All you gotta remember, air in, air out. The two ball valves on the pot, the most important two ball valves, and you'll be fine. To start blasting, first, close the exhaust valve. Second, open the air inlet valve. When you need to refill, opposite order. First close the air inlet valve to the pot, then open the exhaust valve. You'll be just fine. You got this.